Looks like we do have our next match. And this looks like it's going to be a Lime Killer playing Haraza the Incinerator versus... I don't even want to butcher that name. Do... Uh... I... Dewoodaloo! playing uh, Dreaming Fox. Opening hand, I'm just going to call him D. Opening hand for D is uh, Diamond Shard, Double Sapphire Shard, Into the Unknown, Double Transmogrifate, and Silver Talon Adjudicator. Over for Lime Killer playing Haraza the Incinerator, we see a Blood Shard, Blood Ice, Vampire Prince, Shard of Hatred, Ruby Shard, Vampire Princess, and a Blam... Um, Blam Smith. Smith. Yeah, so... A Blam Smith. Uh, yeah, this looks like a Haraza Vampire deck. I mean, specifically Vampire Queen. I really like the Vampire Queen Haraza interaction. I think it's great. And Ooh. I hope he draws one. Of note as well, uh, Vampires against actions in hands is pretty good but unfortunately those actions are things that can stop vampires absolutely <laughs> we see i Sapphire. do want to go ahead i do want to point out that lime the reason this match is particularly of interest is lime killer has been working on this deck for like three or four weeks now it's gone through a lot of iterations it's been really fun to watch it evolve watching hex pvp duels and indeed, that interaction with Transmography, going to go ahead and turn that Vampire Prince into an uh, eager lackey. Not exactly what I'm sure Lime Killer was hoping for. Diamond Shard here for Dow. I'll just say Dow. How's that? Dow. Ruby Shard for Lime Killer. Now with three resources, double blood. We'll see that lackey swing in. At least going to get some work in here. Ping for one. And we'll see Vampire Princess come down. Unfortunately for him, uh, Dow definitely has ways to interact. Transmography going to hit it. Turns it into... Uh, well, that's a, that's a thing. That is a thing. It's, it's, it's a threat. That's for sure. Um, Silver Talent Adjudicator going to draw some cards. Psychic Extension and Room Bind as we go back to Lime Killer. And we'll see the trade here between both players. Yeah, Dreaming Fox players don't tend to care much for the lives of their adjudicators, which I think is a little bit sad. <laughs> They're like, you've done, you served your purpose well, thank you. Now step in front of this troop and oh, we'll see you later. We're going to see Arcane Focus find a Diamond Eye, Psychic Ascension ticking down to 11 after this guidance. Finds an Eldrathian's Glory. Definitely a pretty strong pickup, oh man. Not cool. Um, I mean, but with all those actions in his hand, he's probably going to end up using a card on this princess anyway. So that's kind of cool. Scorpinox for Lime Killer. That's something I haven't seen. Yeah, Scorpinox is a very powerful troop. And actually, this is pretty good timing for Lime Killer here because, like, there are only three resources open. Uh, and that means, you know, he definitely wants to stop that princess from hitting him. But also, Eldorathian Glory can't deal with the Scorpinox, so... Into the unknown He's on at... that Scorpinox, so taking away the threat that Glory can't handle. Yeah, so it's uh, it's put back into the hand, and now... It's a Lasgar's Bloodletter? Yeah, it's a Lasgar's Bloodletter. So what he's done here is he said, okay, I can deal with these troops losing one of my actions to this this queen is an acceptable risk when I can put Eldorathian's glory down next turn. Um, but yeah, I mean, it turned into a pretty good troop anyway. So after that glory, clearing the board for Lime Killer. Going to go back his draw. He'll play a Shard of Hatred out. Going to go choose a Threshold. We'll see Lasgar's Blood Sworn come down along with that Blam Smith. Looks like Socketed with Gladiator. Ooh, and a Dark Heart off the top for Dowl. Yeah, it's a good hit, but is he going to want to sacrifice his Alderathian's glory? Uh, not with that block, I would imagine. Seeing there's only a Socket troop on the other side, probably he doesn't want to mess around there. But okay. Kiss was there, and Kiss is used, so that means 
Uh, suddenly Dark Heart becomes an okay play, even though there aren't the resources to play it this time. But double Dark Heart at the end of his turn. We go back to Lime Killer. Rift War Badger going to come down. Yeah, Badger Ooh. coming in, making a hired horn there. Haraza activating champion power. So plus one in speed to troops for Lime Killer. So here's going to be a swing for eight. Big hit here for Dow. That's going to take him down to 12. Yeah, not only is that a big swing, but with the sting of the Scorpionox as well, the, like this Dark Heart can't block either of these guys, uh, even though, actually no, it can, because the banner has to the banner has to go right, because there are only socketed troops on Correct. the board. So we'll see Interesting. a shard of hatred. At six resources, Lime Killer here trying to decide his line of play. Dow at twelve health. Here comes that hard horn soil sword, or not hard horn. The Dark Heart here, no triggers, because all the troops for Lime Killer are socketed. Hired Horn Hunter, thank you. So what he's got going for him is he's got a lot of socket troops, and that's pretty nice for him right now. What he's got going against him is there are a lot of rune binds in that opposing hand, and he doesn't quite have enough attack to get past those Dark Hearts without the banner on the board, so bit of a stalemate for right now clash of steel okay. wow so silver talent's gonna come down he'll draw some cards and gain some health finds double resources gonna go and play out that sapphire shard here comes a single dark heart lime killer not wanting to sacrifice any of his troops doesn't really need to either he's on 27 health uh a hit of four is you know a problem later down the line but right now it's you know it's something you can potentially just take He'll go to 23. Six health separating both players. Back over to Dow. He's going to have to... S oh, no, I mean back to Lime Killer. Here comes that Well of Hatred. Now at eight. So he's picking up here, and a resource is actually good for him in the sense that if he picks up another Badger or another Sting of the Scorpionox, he actually has enough to push through damage here. Back to Dal have to sacrifice that Silver Talon because it is not a socketed card. Bounty of the Magus. Good pick up here, allowing him to start drawing cards. We'll see a swing again for for with that single dark card. This hit here will put Lime Killer at 19. Only two health separating both players. Bounty of the Magus gonna draw one card. Escalade finds a bounty of the Magus off the top. Wow. Could use that. Draw a couple cards. Wow. So Bounty of the Magus into Bounty of the Magus into Guidance Arcane Focus, uh, which picks up and into the unknown. Wow, that was an impressive little uh, card draw situation going on there. Hero Fall oh, comes down on go. one of the dark cards. Let's see what he decides to do here. There is a Rune Bind available, uh, and he might use it, but I mean... He's not going to use it on his dark card because there are two other dark cards there and then we just have to it. sacrifice it. Exactly. Looks like he's going to rune bind the hero fall. So yeah, and that's actually fantastic for Lime Killer because now that rune bind is gone, it makes the the banner sting of the Scorpionox or double sting of the Scorpionox play much, much better. Even better now he's just put him down to 10. Going to sacrifice... He's going to have to sacrifice that uh, hero fall at the start of his turn, unfortunately. Arcane focus here for Dow. I'm going to go ahead and look at the top two cards. One of them go in his hand. The other one will go back into his deck. It's another bounty. Bounty doing some work here. Arcane focus finds an Eldrathian's glory. Here it comes. Line killer says, nope, that's enough. And we are yeah. going to go into reserves. He was holding on there. Like, he did have a very slim chance of getting enough damage through to win there. But, um, you know, Dreaming Fox draws cards, and that's a, a deep shame for Lime Killer. All right, we're going to bring you game two here in a second. Lime Killer just not finding enough juice here to get the win.
it does seem like Eldarathian's glory is a real problem for Lime Killer. And I wonder if he has, uh, you know, troops with high defense or some way of, you know, trying to get around that. Dark Heart's also a problem when you're running these these banner champions and additional constants and stuff. But he does have the option uh, to run cards like Ruby's Favor, so potentially not all that threatening. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at opening hands for both players. Lime Killer will have the option to go first. Lime Killer's opening hand: Double Blood Shard, Shard of Hatred, Runic Avalanche, Riftwarp Badger, um, Vampire Princess, and uh, the Nefarious. I'm it's escaping me at the top of my head. Corrupter, Nefarious Corrupter, oh, yeah. and it's a very, very good card in this matchup actually because what Dreaming Fox likes to do is put a troop on the board and then sit on that troop for the entire game. And if that troop happens to be dealing two damage every turn to him, then that's pretty good. And Death Very by Summon an Abomination out. that gets attack and defense equal to this troop's attack and defense. Over for Dow, we see Diamond Shard, a Sapphire Ice, it looks like, Clash of Steel, Weaving to Nothing, Psychic Ascension, Dark Cardinal is on, and Transmogrifade. Ooh, Diamond Ice. Those are always hard to see sometimes. Diamond Ice and Sapphire Ice. Just a little bit different. Yeah, they're very, very close. That's why I had just given you guys a little bit of a zoom in. All right. Uh, yeah, so let's get into the action here. Slow resource here for Lime Killer. Going to go ahead and go for that Blood Reese uh, Threshold. Back over to Dal. He'll find a I'm Sapphire just, Shard. Just decided. I've never really taken the time to look at it. But the guy, that wizard... On Runic Avalanche is doing some cool stuff right there. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of that art. That's good art. Just a, a crazy wizard controlling an he avalanche. Is surfing down an avalanche, yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty good stuff. So we'll see Dal play out that diamond ice. Gonna go ahead and fate weave. Passes the turn. Lime Killer finds a blood shard off the top. Now at three. We'll see that Vampire Princess come down. And I'm pretty sure we'll probably see Transmogrifade here, possibly. Sapphire. There, what, there was no Sapphire last turn, but yeah. yeah, I mean, you don't want to get hit by a princess when you're holding all of those. <laughs> all right, here comes that Well Riftwarp Badger going to come down pre-combat. Interesting. Uh, it's it's interesting, but it's also really bad for Lime Killer here because this Transmogrifade is going to come down, and there is a Clash of Steel in that hand, and Clash of Steel uh, really likes boards where you've played nothing of your own and your opponent has played three things. That big hit for seven, though, that's going to take Dow down to 18. It's got to be Clash, right? Probably Clash, and then maybe Lime Killer keeps the banner, and then Vampire Princess swing in, or I don't know. This will be interesting to see what he wants to do here. Suppose Dark Heart has enough defense that he could just put that down now. He has gone for the Clash, but that's—I mean—that's pretty decent actually. Uh, one resource open, and that means you know the only thing that could possibly stop this Princess. Uh, is a transmogrifade or a rune bind, I guess. And here comes the princess, not knowing here that Dal does have an answer. Swing for three, transmogrifade, going to hit that princess. What does it become? Becomes the deep gaze acolyte. Still hit for three. Dal down to 15. Lime killer at 23. So eight health separating both players. Bounty the Magus off the top for Dal. Yeah, this health is going to matter too. Um,. As I say, the Corruptor is a very, very good shout in this matchup where, you know, the opponent just wants to kind of put Dark Heart down and not really do much else. It does kind of get mitigated a little bit by the Adjudicators, but, you know, having done some damage uh, is quite nice here for Lime Killer. And we'll see that uh, Dark Heart of Nilzan, which means Lime Killer is going to have to decide what he wants to sacrifice here. Easy choice, I think. Yep. Finds a hero fall Ooh. off the top. Wow, that was amazing. So that kind of changes everything here. I mean, he can still do the corrupt to play. Um, but I mean, with hero fall, why would he? 
So Dark Heart will go into the Crypt. The other three and Dow's deck are going to go into the Void. And here comes that Nefarious Corruptor with speed. No target, but still going to have four damage. This is going to take Dow down to 11. Yeah, so this is looking very interesting now. So we've got a, a speed troop on board with currently no way uh, for Duwadulu to stop it. And a Runic Avalanche with a banner out on board so potentially a huge elemental with speed um unfortunately weave into nothing is a thing and you know all the resources are held open but i mean i like the concept speed speed elementals that are really big seem pretty good so at the end of dow's turn here gonna go back to lime killer readies primordial cock it twice that's definitely an option here. It definitely is, yeah. I mean, he could just put the troop down, but making your opponent discard when they only have three in hand is pretty big. Especially, you know, he really wants that Psychic Ascension, uh, but he also really wants the other guys, too. <laughs> so activation of Kaka twice. Dow's going to have to decide what two cards to pitch. Which one to keep? Bounty. Going to go ahead and get used here. And keeps a weave into nothing. Psychic Ascension goes into the crypt. Swing for four. Dow's going to be on a two-turn clock after this. After that hit goes to seven. Ooh, Runebind. Okay, so Runebind is strong. Um, it, what he, you know, he realized the threat. He realized he was dying. And if another troop comes down with speed, he's probably, you know, the game's over. So picking the weave into nothing there is the correct choice just to... Make sure you don't die immediately. All right, so here comes that Vigil of Nolzan. Dow having to make a decision here what he wants to do. Going to weave into nothing. That'll allow him to fate weave. Hopefully try to find an answer. Here comes a shard. And Lime Killer here with a swing could put Dow on a one-turn clock if he decides not to use Runebind. Swing, and Dow goes down to three. Back to him. Finds an arcane focus. And Ooh. here's where the adjudicator train starts. <laughs> Trying to find it. Finds another arcane focus. So we'll see. Finds a ice. I'm surprised, honestly, because every time I've seen a Dreaming Fox in this situation, they've drawn back-to-back -back adjudicators and won the game off of it. Transmogrophate is good here, but there is only one resource open and two troops potentially coming. So it all depends on this avalanche. Avalanche is going to be critical here. Needs to be at least a three troop or more. A two, because it will get plus one. So oh, any true. card above one cost is good here. Now Dow, Any card above one Dow could rune bind the the banner so it wouldn't get speed, but still that's dies. true. But still dies, yeah, yeah to the true. to the corruptor. So if it's all resources, he lives. That is a seven cost card. That is a uh, yeah. That is a seven cost two cost. And uh, that is a 10-9 elemental with that nefarious corruptor. And uh, unfortunately for Dal, looks like not much he can do here in this situation. And that's going to do it. And Lime Killer will tie this up 1-1. One, one. All right, so we're going to bring you... Doing some sneaky three. stuff there. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, it's still... It still is, you know, if the Dreaming Fox deck does what it wants to do, it's going to have trouble. But um, there are some, some tools there that definitely help it along the way. Dark Heart is a huge problem, though, for these decks that want to put the banners down. And and are running a lot of socket troops, too. With the Corruptor in there, with the uh, Badger in there, it means that, you know, most of the time it is the banner that's going to be the one that gets sacrificed. It looks like he may have taken out Sting of the Scorpionox for this matchup because of that. 
Uh, but he might still have it in there. All right, so we're going to bring you game three action here between Dow and Lime Killer. We're just waiting for that to pop up. Appreciate you guys all joining us today for coverage of the Hex Bash. Remember, this tournament is every Saturday at 8 a.m. Pacific, so make sure if you want to get in on the $1,000 cash constructed tournament. Don't forget, for those limited players, there is the Hex Clash on Sundays at 8 a.m. Pacific as well. So two chances to enter into uh, $1,000 tournaments, both in constructed and limited. Uh, make sure you guys check that out so really heck stepping up on uh these cash uh tournaments uh giving you guys an opportunity to compete and play against the best players in hex and a chance to win some sweet sweet cash all right so we're just waiting for this match to pop up And looks like we do have it here. So let's go ahead in. Lime Killer and Dow tied at 1-1. One, one. We'll take a look at opening hands. Dow here with a Diamond Ice, Diamond Shard, Sapphire Ice, Sapphire Shard, Double Weave into Nothing in Eldrathian's Glory. Over for Lime Killer. Looks like Double blo uh, double Blood Shard, a Well of Hatred, Vampire Prince and Princess, uh, Scorponox and Lasgard's Blood Sword. So yeah, interesting hands for both players. What do you think, Neil? Good curve for Lime Killer, two three, uh, well, two twos and a three. And then, you know, the Scorponox to finish things up. But things are looking good for Duodulio as well with the Eldarathian's Glory, one of the best possible cards he could have in this matchup uh, against a bunch of dudes that don't have four defense. Uh, plus those Weaving to Nothings too, you know, potentially meeting those, like, vampires, specifically Princess head-on. And stopping that from ever hitting the board. So be interesting to see uh, what choice he makes here in, in regards to the first card he plays. Focus into focus. Very focused right now. Very focused and very resource uh, in hand here. We're going to go over to Lime Killer. Looks like round three has started for all players. So good luck to players in the tournament starting round number three. Vampire Prince or Lime Killer. Back over to Dalphines and into the unknown. So he has a choice. He makes the choice. The choice is to play a slow shard here instead of the the quick shard that would allow him to hold up those weave into nothings this turn. And that means, of course, the princess is going to meet her prince. Are they prince. like brother and sister, or are they? Uh, you know, uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I think they I think they are brother and sister because the queen can make both. Right. That right. Yeah. They they are her children. Yeah. Okay. Canonical representation by the Queen there. Thank you, Queenie. <laughs> Guidance uh, milled as a result of that Vampire Prince hit. Going to go ahead and hold up with those Weave into Nothings. Back to Lime Killer. Here comes Lasgar's Blood Sworn. And a swing here for four. Do we see? No. Going to go ahead and do that hit so that... Uh, Looks like it hit one of the weave into the unknowns and turned it into a vampiric kiss for Lime Killer. Good hit there. It is a good hit, but, um, you know, Glory don't care. <laughs> Glory, Glory does care. not care. Uh, the one saving grace here, of course, is that, you know, those vampires are not going to go to the void. They are going to be probably sacrificed to the Blood Swan, which will go to the void. Or maybe, you know, he doesn't have any way to recur them anyway, so he's just going to let it all go. He does sacrifice. So sacrifice number one, sacrifice number two. And Glory comes down and takes care of the Blood Swarm, putting it into the void. That's going to end his turn back to Lime Killer. Off the top, finds uh, Scorponox to join the one in hand. Yeah, double Scorponox, very interesting. Um, and particularly interesting if it comes down and gets eaten by that into the unknown. Gemmore Prowl is really good here as well. Obviously, he's had some trouble in previous games with the uh, the Dark Hearts. Unfortunately, that's not his problem this time. So, Scorponox going to come down. Speed, Crush, Life Drain. And passes it back over to Dow. Finds a resource off the top. Well of purpose. Going to go be able to choose either Diamond or Sapphire Threshold. Goes for that Diamond. And a swing for five. Lime Killer. 
Going to take that to the chin. Goes to 24. Still enjoying a 5 health lead over his opponent. Finds a Primordial Sabertooth off the top. Yeah, that's that's really good for him, actually. Activation, 5 damage. 5 damage. Going to take care of that glory. Yeah, that's exactly what he needed right now. I mean, it is possible to save the glory um, if he wants to. There is a rune bind available here, but he might just let it go. The looming threat of a glory, though, does potentially, you know, stop your opponent from playing troops down, slow them down a little bit as well. Trying to decide if he wants to save the glory. Going to go ahead and put it into a mysterious rune, so no damage dealt. And a shard of hatred for Lime Killer. Transmogrophade on that Scorponox. Going to turn it into a walking boneyard, so... Three damage here, gonna still hit down the face, take him to 16. Ooh, there's that adjudicator, and there are those resources. So, the adjudicator, again, they're not very highly valued uh, in terms of life. You know, adjudicator comes in, draws some cards, and uh, the kiss is interesting. It was gonna get voided anyway. Oh, actually, that was fantastic. That was a fantastic play. He killed the Adjudicator so that the the Boneyard there had an additional point of defense and didn't get removed by Glory. That was pretty good. Uh, that was, yeah, that was pretty slick. Back to Lime Killer. Bone, uh, Boneyard will ready. Play out a resource now in seven. Activation of the banner now makes it a 5-4. Here comes that Scorpinox as well. So here comes a swing. Scorpinox a 7-4. We'll see that block. Going to gain 7 health. Lime Killer now at 33 health. Man, that was that was such a slick... I'm still just like... Because obviously it's there. But it's when you're in, in the moment, it's hard to always play around these cards that you don't normally see because, you know, they're not in your deck. They've been changed into a random card by a transform effect. So, yeah, I I didn't see that line straight away. Back over to Lime Killer. Finds a Nefarious Corruptor. Here comes that swing for six. Gonna go ahead and take that hit. So at 13, so 20 health separating Lime Killer and Dow here. It's pretty huge, but I mean, if anything happens here, uh, Duadulu is in a pretty good spot. Dark Heart comes in. Unfortunately for this Dark Heart, there is an effect here that can't oh be interrupted. My gosh. Doesn't know what's about to happen to him here. Lime Killer with the good reserve here. Gemborn Prowler going to go ahead and void that Dark Heart, saving his banner in the process. He's going to play that uh, Splinter of Bokrug. That's going to mill cards from both players. Here comes that Blood Ice for the Fate Weave. And here Prowler comes, comes the... down. Lost the Sabertooth and the Sting of the Sting of the Scorpinox as a result of that hit. So it's a double-edged sword when you play that Splinter. Runebind also here for uh for Dao here. We see six damage ready on board. Weave into nothing and into the un or into the unknown can definitely respond here if he wants to. So into the unknown, gonna go ahead and target the banner. The banner mm. turns it into a troop. Very nice, very nice. Troops no longer have speed as a result. We want a silver talent off the top. Psychic Ascension can be so interesting here. Activation Champion Fire, we said Broodnet. So that will also be able to lock things down on the start of his next turn. Hero Fall for Lime Killer. Yeah, this Weave into Nothing is really clutch here. Um, because the Corruptor could win the game. Uh, you know, once it, once Troop is down, the Corruptor's tick of two every turn is really significant when your opponent's only on six and you're on 33. Um, but I, you know, I can't imagine that it lands with Weave into Nothing in the hand there. Silver Talon Adjudicator drawing some cards. Activation of Champion Power. Hero Fall in response. Going to hit that Silver Talon Adjudicator. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty good choice. You really want to get rid of those adjudicators when, you know, you're dealing damage here and you want to get through as much damage as possible. Um, and the only thing that can really heal your opponent are those adjudicators. So pretty solid line. I really hope this game is won by Corruptor. Um, you know, all the, all that Corruptor needs to do is come down and put two damage a turn onto that that web uh, web guard, and I don't think it's going to happen. Here comes He's the... holding up that weave into he nothing is. like it's the most important thing in the world, and it is. It is really important to him. Swing here for one. No. Oh. Oh, and the Corruptors, he's going to try it for the play. Doesn't know that Weave Into Nothing is a thing. No other cards left in Lime Killer's hand. Weave Into Nothing, and we see a Spider come down, which triggers the, the, the Web Guard, and the Widow will also be able to stun a troop as well. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty good. I like it. So web guard gonna go ahead and lock down something. Winter's widow will go ahead and stun a troop, stunning the crush troop. Corruptor was really huge. That was uh oh, oh there's glory wow. again. Glory gonna come down, and as luck would have it, all of Duadulu's du troops have four defense. <laughs> all of them. And there's a Tale of Insight in hand as well. So he gets everything out of the way, is able to swing in, put on a Tale of Insight, and he can also Bounty of the Magus if he wants to as well. Lime Killer taking a couple points of damage, still sitting at 21 health above his opponent. Here comes Vampire Prince. Interesting enough. And Bounty of the Magus going to create another Winter Widow, and Web Guard is going to not only exhaust this, but now it's going to get stunned as well. Lime Killer just trying to find something in a, a Drathian glory off the top with a totem trap and a bounty of the Magus. Wow, how things have quickly started turning here uh, against Lime Killer. Yep. Um, if he wasn't set, he definitely is now. He has so many answers to so many problems, and the troop is stunned anyway. Uh, that Corruptor would have him down to six right now. But I don't even think that would make too much of a difference. Uh, with the Dark Eye in hand, he could just sacrifice off a Corrupted Troop if he wanted to. A Badger for Lime Killer facing off against a huge board here. Nope, Lime Killer says, I'm done. And uh, down here... I'm going to be honest, Lime Killer. Killer. I'm going to be honest. The fact you didn't play that to see what troop it made makes me a little bit sad. But um, well fought and a very interesting deck. Um... Not very well positioned against Eldorathian's glory, as it seems. Uh, and also Dark Heart is definitely a problem too. But if you don't expect to see that much streaming Fox, because, you know, people haven't actually been running it that much recently, uh, it's actually a pretty good shout. Uh, 